Sunday, and uh, we're going to get into that in just a minute, but also it's Memorial Day. I love seeing all the red, white, and blue, the patriotic. We truly have a blessed nation, and we're going to pray for that nation today. So, if you would, uh, please stand, and I'm going to open in prayer, and we will sing our first hymn. So, Lord, we thank you that you are a God who keeps his promises. You spoke to your disciples, and you said, wait for the promised Holy Spirit. And you deliver that spirit to them, and you continue to deliver him today. So Lord, we give you this time, and we pray that you will be honored with all that we offer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Oh, 
All right, let us pray. God, our Creator, Earth has many languages, but your Gospel announces your love to all nations in one heavenly speech. Make us messengers of the good news that through the power of your Spirit, everyone everywhere may unite in one song of praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I just want to say a welcome to all the children. We've got a few children in here. How much we love the little ones. Don't stress if they act like children. They're very welcome. So, very glad that they're here. And now I believe we have a song from the choir. All right. Don't they sound good? They sound good, don't they? Remembering our baptism into Jesus Christ, as we gather, we are to live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with faithful hearts and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my sins unto the Lord. May God forgive the sins of my sins. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer. We confess to you that we are by nature sinners, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. Therefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, pleading for and seeking your grace for the sake of our Lord. Uh, please join us in a moment of silent prayer and reflection. Most merciful God, you have given your only God's Son to die for us. Have mercy upon us. God, our Heavenly Father, has, mer has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us. And Jesus' sake, God forgives all our sins to those who believe on Jesus' name. He gives power to become children of God and bestows on them His Holy Spirit. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. Grant this, O Lord, unto us all. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Okay. Before reading these texts this morning, I want you to note the rectangle that appears during the reading of this text. And um, notice the bold print near the bottom of that rectangle. That's where the congregation itself, together with those who will do separate readings this morning in various languages, for the obvious reason that on Pentecost Sunday, the first Pentecost, there were many, many languages, and you'll hear about the people in the text and from the countries from which they came. So, with that little introduction, uh, reading from the book of Acts, uh, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and, divi and divided <coughs> tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together. And they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. I will agree in Chinese. Norwegian. First I heard good as I 
Världen är han gav sin son. Den arven för att han dör som korta han. Aldrig har skall gå fortat, men har även liv. I'm bleeding in camel. Devon Tamuriya Ure Terana Kumarani, Visuasikra Uman Yevanai, Avan Kritu Kohama, Nithi Jeevanai, Ali Parikrus, Avanai Tandururi, Ibuna Vai, Uravatil, Andu Kurda. I will read in German. Den also hat Gott die Welt geliebt, dass er seinen eingeborenen Sohn gab, auf das alle, die an ihn glauben, nicht verloren werden, sondern das ewige Leben haben. I will read in French. Car Dieu a tant aimé le monde, qu'il a donné son fils unique, afin que qui m'en croit en lui ne produise pas, mais qu'il ait la vie éternelle. I will speak in Hawaiian. No kamea kua aloha nui, me kai kuku a, i ko ke une, no la ila kua a, a wi ua ka o ia e kana ke ki iwa iwa, i oli e ma ki ka a ma a mana, a o ia ua a ia ala, a ka e le au a i, o ke o la ulua. Now our readers will read together as one, as it was, would have sounded on that first Pentecost Sunday, or whatever day it was. <laughs> I hope that sounds confusing to every <laughs> ear here, <laughs> because that's the way the folks responded. They didn't understand what was going on on that first Pentecost. Now we would like you to speak in your language, English, or one that you know, and you haven't let me know that, so I could have you back there. <laughs> uh, we, will, we will say that together, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And continuing the reading. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not these all who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And they were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with wine. I can just see that happening. But Peter, standing in the, uh, with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is 9 a.m. People don't get drunk at 9 a.m. in the morning. Usually it takes a, a, a good portion of the day. <laughs> but, and... Let me go back here to where I was. Um, yeah, the, they are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And then we hear the prophecy of Joel. 
And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor and of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. Praise to you, Christ. Reading now from the book of Numbers uh, and the 11th chapter. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him, and some of the and, and some of the spirit that was on him, he put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. And they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the Spirit rested on them. And they were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and the assistant to Moses from his youth, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. shows. Okay. Oh, so now we continue with the Apostles' Creed. No? no. no? no. Wait. Oh, first. I was just testing you guys. Make sure you guys knew what was going on. You passed. Congratulations. Okay, here we go. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, we're going to start in verse number 3. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are a variety of service, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, 
to another interpretation of tongues. And all these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jew or Greek, slave or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. Here ends the reading. Now, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son and Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, and right now I'm going to invite the children to come on up here. We have a children's story for them. Very excited about So you kiddos, come on up. Don't be shy. Nobody can see you. Okay, would you rather that I just don't have the children up here and that I speak to you all? Would that be better? Okay. Maybe I should come sit all Okay. We're going to have a celebration today. <clears throat> Let me show what I have for this party. I have birthday gifts. Ooh. Notice the colors. And I have birthday candles. And I have also a balloon. Now, can you guess what kind of celebration we're going to be having today? A birthday party. All right. Right? Now, I know some of you might have, one of you might have a birthday coming up, but that's not what we're celebrating. Today is, we, is the day that we celebrate. That's okay. Today is a day that we celebrate the birthday of the church. The day that the church really got its start. We call it the day of Pentecost. It's when we remember the day when God sent the Holy Spirit to his people, just as Jesus has promised that he would. Now, these birthday items are going to help us remember what happened in the church on the day of Pentecost. They will also remind us that the Holy Spirit is still at work in the church today. Now, balloons, uh, this is just going to be singular balloon, okay, balloon, mm -hmm. balloons, but there's usually at a birthday party lots of balloons, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of balloons. But as you can see, this one's kind of flat and lifeless, so it needs to be filled. And someone's going to have to breathe some life into it. Me. <laughs> okay. Now the Bible tells us that on the day of Pentecost, the followers of Jesus were all together in one place when suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. Okay. <laughs> Gonna make it sound like a mighty rushing wind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is 
not a mighty rushing wind, but it's supposed to sound like a mighty rushing wind. Okay, so, and not like that. We are here today waiting for the Holy Spirit to fill this place and breathe new life into the Church of Jesus Christ. Now, like any other, like any good birthday cake, we have candles. Now the birthday candles, you know, when we light it, it's to remind us that on the day of Pentecost, uh, tongues of fire came and can we rested. Hold that? You want to yes. hold it? Yes. I can be trusted. Okay. No. Okay, this is, okay, this is, Ooh, that's it, fancy. What is that? It's, it, okay. It, it works. What is that? Oh. Yeah. Yes. And it, it rested the Pentecost. Yes. And it fell and rested upon each of the people in that place. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other languages. You heard all the different languages. As the Spirit gave them ability. Just on the day of Pentecost, we need the Holy Spirit to come and light our fire. Amen. And give us the power to do things which will bring bring glory to mm. God. Amen. Yeah. Okay. You can blow it so that it doesn't burn on you. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is a birthday party without gifts? We have gifts. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit gave the early church the gifts of forgiveness. Do you want to hold it? Yes, it's a gift. Echo? That's a gift of Here, forgiveness. Here, Eric, want to hold it? Maybe yes. one of those guys back there? You hold that. Just hold it. Yes. And There's truly, no cash in it. Are this you? is a gift of you truth. One of those guys, no? And also, a gift of new, new life. All right. The Holy Spirit offers these same gifts today. <laughs> he leads us to truth. Just, it's not my name. Yeah. It gives us a better way to live. Yeah. As we celebrate the birth of the church, let's remember that the Holy Spirit is still alive and at work in us today, like He was in the people of the early church. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Help us to remember that the Holy Spirit still fills the church with power today, just as he did on the day of Pentecost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 That was great. <laughs> we'll remember the balloon forever. <laughs> I tried that, that's your legacy, Lydia. <laughs> You're taking a boat. You're not allowed to move. <laughs> okay, well, as we get into the message, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a timer to make sure that I don't go over by too much. And there is my timer. So as we get into this message, I'm not going to read Acts chapter 2 uh, again. Paul, Pastor Paul did such an amazing, amazing job at that. But I want you to keep that in your back of your mind as we, as we go through this. And also, you know, I felt kind of compelled to do this. Before we get into uh, the message, I did want to take a moment. I just want to honor Pastor Paul and Pastor Mike um, as a young pastor uh, it's, it's awesome to be able to look at those who have gone before me and follow their example and in a lot of ways stand on their shoulders as, you know, we as the, as the church, we're standing on the shoulders, so to speak, of those who, the disciples uh, who gathered at Pentecost and have been following generation after generation, carrying on the word and the spirit and the traditions. So I want to honor you two pastors for doing that and paving the way for a young generation of pastors like myself uh, to carry on the traditions and the word and the spirit of the Lord. So thank you guys very much for who you are and, and what you guys do and, and 
hopefully I, I uh, can follow in your footsteps well. But I want to open up with a story of a friend of mine by the name of Maeve Carver. And if you're watching this Maeve on YouTube, how are you doing? I was a uh, youth pastor for about five or six years, loved doing it. Teenagers are awesome. They dress weird and it's okay. They talk weird. That's fine. Um, but I, I love teenagers. And one summer I was taking a group of teenagers out to street evangelize in Tacoma and in Puyallup. And what we would do is we'd, we'd spend one day kind of training and, and creating uh, the administration safety when you take teenagers anywhere, you have to have like administration and safety and making sure everything's okay. Um, so we were we were taking these kids out to downtown Puyall, about where the library is. You know that I believe it's Pioneer Park, and we were going to street evangelize in, in an August beautiful summer day. And before we went, I said, "Okay, guys, I want you guys. We're going to take 20 minutes, and we're going to go and pray." And I want you guys to go find a corner wherever in this field. I want you guys to pray, and then we'll go get on the bus. We'll go out to, uh, and we'll go out and evangelize. So everybody broke up, and we prayed for about 20 minutes. And this young lady named Maeve Carver came up to me. And she said, Pastor Eric, I saw this vision in my head of an English terrier dog, and I can't shed it. I can't shake it. Could this mean something? I said, an English terrier dog? You know what? How about this? You write it down. And then we'll just kind of see, see what happens. I mean, English Terrier Dog, it sounds odd. It sounds weird, right? Like an English Terrier Dog, what, what could that possibly mean? So she wrote it down. We got on the bus. We went out. We're walking around downtown Puyallup. Beautiful summer day. There's people everywhere. And as she's, she's walking around Pioneer Park, she just kind of like doesn't know who to talk to. I mean, teenagers, you know? So she looks up in the sky. She's kind of standing there. And she sees a cloud that looks like an English Terrier dog. And she thought, well, that's interesting. And as she drops her kind of her head back down to, to earth, she sees a woman standing underneath this cloud, you know, in the general vicinity. She drops back down and she goes, okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna talk to this woman. And she goes and she goes, approaches this woman, and she says, ma'am, hi, you know, do you by any chance have an English Terrier dog? Come to find out the woman does have an English Terrier dog. And that led to a 20-minute conversation of a little teenage girl with pink hair or blue or whatever it was at the time. Maybe if you're watching, you'll remember what color her hair was. But she ends up sharing the goodness of God in her life to this woman for 20 minutes. And then at the end is able to pray with this woman and bless her as she goes on the way. And I love that story so much because it was just a simple testimony of how one teenager was empowered by the Holy Spirit to be bold. And it came from an intimate place. She started in an intimate place with Jesus and was given just a simple picture that ended up bringing the goodness of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ to the attention of this woman. And May was able to share what Jesus had done in her life. Now, the dog, it might seem silly, but it was a language that this woman was going to be able to understand. She, she understood the English Terrier, and through a series of what seemed like silly events, there was a really powerful moment that this woman might not have had otherwise. And I'm so excited for, for Maeve because now she lives in Boston, and she goes up and down uh, the East Coast, and she goes to Central America sharing the goodness of God with people. So not only was this woman blessed with the good news of Jesus Christ, but also it emboldened this young lady to now continue to live a lifestyle of taking steps towards being an emboldened and empowered follower of Jesus. Now today is the day of Pentecost, and I want to, before we get into it, I want to build a little framework around and just kind of give some facts about Pentecost. Now Pentecost is, is, Pentecost is a Greek word and that means 50. Now we hear the, the term Pentecost in the New Testament, we hear Shavuot, which is a Hebrew word meaning weeks, and we hear the Feast of Weeks, and they're all kind of in procession. Now the Feast of Weeks traditionally began about two days after Passover, and that was a succession of seven weeks, and so basically 49 days, and the 50th day 
was Pentecost. And I would make this note as well. Study, like pay attention to the number seven in scripture, especially in the book of Daniel, especially in the book of Revelation. Okay? Now, Pentecost marked the end of the barley harvest and the beginning of the wheat harvest. Now, many festivals were about seven days, but Pentecost was one day because there was a harvest to go out and gather. There was work to be done. Now, Pentecost also is the celebration of the birth of Israel. Now, about 50 days, and I use the word about approximately 50 days after the Red Sea parted and the nation of Israel escaped from the Egyptians, uh, Mos Moses ascends Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. And I love this so much because this first Pentecost was the birth of Israel, and the Pentecost we see in the book of Acts was the birth of the church. Now also, this is the first time since the Garden of Eden do we see a man standing in the glory of God, and that would be Moses. There had been a divide, obviously, since the fall of man between flesh and spirit and between God and man, and this was the reuniting. It was a renewal. Now, as we get into this, I want to start in Exodus chapter 19, and at the end of your packet, you can follow along if you would like. Exodus 19, 1 through 6, it says this, On the third new moon, after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai and encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain. While Moses went up to God, the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and to the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples of the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. The Lord is making a beautiful declaration over the Hebrew people. For 430 years they have been slaves. They have been property. They have been at the whim of the Egyptian Pharaoh to build whatever it was he needed or wanted. And now he was beginning a righteous process to remove not only the physical bonds of slavery, but the mental, emotional, and spiritual bonds as well. God speaks to Moses about what his desires are for his people. And I love this about God. What we saw, what the world saw, was a generation of slaves. What Egypt saw was a generation of slaves. Generations, multiple generations of slaves. But what God saw was a kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I think that needs to be a reminder to all of us that God doesn't see us by what binds us or what struggles us or what ails us. He sees us as what he has declared over your life. A holy nation and a royal priesthood. Aren't you grateful for that? God was speaking to Moses so he could in turn instruct the people of the intimate relationship that we are invited into with our great God. Now Pentecost is a renewal of intimate reverence before God. And just like I told that story of my friend Maeve, she, see Maeve had an intimate encounter with God, which led to, to being able to have the boldness to share the love of Jesus with some random woman on the streets. But how many of you know that woman was not random to God? Exodus 19, 7 through 12. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words so that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, 
that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe in you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to the Lord, and the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. On the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people, and you shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Take care not to go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. Yikes. I think it's important to note that Moses, if you remember, struggled to speak. He had a speech impediment. And he goes to the Lord with this in Exodus chapter 3. But God steadied his tongue when his tongue spoke the words that God put on it. Now, imagine how different our lives would be, our relationships would be, if we spoke the words of the Lord to each other. If we spoke the words that brought glory to God and honor to God. How different would our marriage be, our relationship with our kids, our relationship with ourself? Yeah. <laughs> it's not just about what we speak, it's also about how we behave, how we interact with culture, how we lead our communities. And I think about this a lot. I believe that Holy Spirit-filled Jesus followers should be leading in all areas of culture and society. I believe we desperately need to be leading in politics school system, boardrooms, business meetings, military leadership, foreign relations. What God spoke to Moses about his people still rings true today. We are a holy nation, a kingdom of priests, God's treasured possession. You are God's treasured possession. Amen. If that's what we are, shouldn't we be in high places of influence and decision? Look what happens to culture when people who reject those ideas are making decisions. Okay? Moses now had to give tough instructions to the people. And remember, the people didn't always like Moses. They didn't always listen to him. And if you continue to read the narrative, they grumbled against Moses quite a bit. Just like Moses was empowered to have a voice to speak and lead God's people and give them righteous instructions and boundaries, so should we as God's people have that same empowerment. Pentecost is a renewal of the empowerment of the individual. Now there's a boldness that comes with obedience. There is courage that comes from God's presence. And if a 16-year-old girl can follow the leading of the Lord, how much more can I? How much more should I? Exodus 19, we're almost done. Exodus 19 16 through 19. On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they took their stand on the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire and smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln. And the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in the thunder. Now this is a powerful illustration of God's desire to be near us, but also the need for us to honor, respect, and righteously fear the Lord. If there's not a comparison between man and the glory and majesty of God in this visual, then I don't know what is. He holds the glory, the power, the authority, the majesty, the sovereignty. Amen. But yet he invites us into this beautiful partnership with him to go out and touch the world with that glory and with that power and that love and that authority. With the thunder, imagine being... Now, imagine being the foot of that mountain and looking up and seeing this take place. The thunder and the lightning and the cloud of smoke and the trumpets and the wind, each one representing the glory of God. I mean, I'm sure there was a mix of emotions, wasn't there? But now imagine being Moses and being in the center of that glory and majesty and authority. As we close Revelations 4, 1 through 6 says, is one of my favorite 
passages in all of Scripture. After I look, and this is, this is now John speaking in the book of Revelation, After I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and seated on those thrones were twenty-four elders, clothed in white garments, with crowns on their heads. And from the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are seven spirits, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. We see in this passage. Now, it says seven spirits of God to make a note. That's talking about the complete one spirit of God. We know there's not seven gods, there's one God. We see in this passage the similarities between what was happening on Mount Sinai and what is, what how is, has been, and what will always be taking place in the throne room of our great God. And it is inspiring and overwhelming. Now, in closing, I want to wrap back around to what is taking place in Actor Chu that Pastor Paul so beautifully read. Now, we see the Holy Spirit manifesting himself, not in one single flame of fire, but in multiple tongues of fire, resting on every person present. They heard a mighty rushing wind that filled the entire room, much like the air being let out of a balloon. That's a joke. <laughs> How overpowering that must have been. A gateway from heaven had been opened in this moment, and the earth was being righteously invaded by the presence of God. We see the Holy Spirit taking his dwelling place in man. Man was now the tabernacle, the dwelling place for the Almighty God. No, man no longer needed a priest to go into the most holy place, as we are now the priests. We now have access to the fullness of God to empower us, to embolden us, to fill us with the power for the working of miracles and the power to love those that God himself loved. And sometimes the greatest miracle is loving your neighbor. We are now given the power to speak the word of God with boldness, to speak into the language of both ethnicity and culture with wisdom and authority. To speak now the words that God has put in our mouth, be it seasoned with grace, joy, and other fruits of the Spirit. To speak words of fierce boldness in prayer against principalities and powers that seek to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. To speak words of desperate prayer that cry out to God in our native language or a language unknown given to us by the Holy Spirit. To speak words of repentance, confession, and conviction to our God, to our brothers and sisters in Christ, to our spouse, to our friends. The nation of Israel was birthed through the speaking of God's word with boldness, through the God's servant Moses, who was enveloped in the glory and the spirit of Almighty God. The church of Jesus Christ was birthed through the speaking of the word of God with boldness, empowered by the infilling of the Holy Spirit to those in the upper room. We got a taste of that just a moment ago. The church of Jesus Christ now grows through the speaking of the word of God with boldness that is empowered by the infilling of the Holy Spirit of all believers. Pentecost is a renewal of the connection between heaven and earth. And as we look at the feasts and festivals, the story of Exodus and Mount Sinai, what took place in the upper room, and what has been going on for eternity in the throne room, through all these great lessons, we see an amazing, powerful, and sovereign God wanting to make his dwelling place among us so that he can empower us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And the question I have for us all today as we move on is, are you available? Am I available to be filled with God's spirit to go into all the world and to preach the gospel? And as we keep that in mind, I'm going to ask the, uh, the ushers to come forward. Or do I ask the ushers or do they just come? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Beautiful.
as Jesus gathered with his disciples for the last time, he took the bread. And he said, take and eat, for this is my body that was broken for you. And then he took the cup, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood that was shed for you. I believe the table has been set, and I'm going to invite Pastor Mike to come up, and we're going to serve communion, and he will say whatever I missed right there. <laughs> oh, no. I'm making up for my own mistakes. Okay, there you go. She'll take care of that. Okay. All you take is grab the plate. Okay. Please be seated. <laughs> I just want to make sure that everybody saw that. <laughs> Body of Christ. Blood of Christ. Body of Christ. Shed for you. Body of Christ. Christ for you. Blood of Christ. Body of Christ. Blood 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 of Christ. Thank you. 
Okay, well we have some uh, prayer requests here. I'll just read them as they are wrote. Praise God, Ryan's post-chemo tests were good. That's, that's a praise of the Lord right there. He will have PET scans every three months. Thank you for all the prayers and Bondarea. I hope I said that correctly. Luda Vash. Oh, I was told I was told how to pronounce this, and I rehearsed it before service. Her younger sister, Galena, passed away in Russia last Tuesday. Um, Luda is having a hard time being so far from family. Please pray for her and her family. We will do that. Rachel Harger, prayers of thanks, giving for steady progress in her recovery from her accident in March. That is from Heidi.
So Lord, we lift these requests up to you. Those who are sick, we give thanks for those who are in recovery. Lord, we know that you are the God of them all. Lord, we pray for those that are hurting, especially on this Memorial Day as we grieve righteously, Lord. Let us not forget those who are in pain. And Lord, we thank you for this beautiful congregation and these people who serve you faithfully. So Lord, I pray you would bless them and honor their lives with your presence and your goodness. And Lord, we thank you for this nation that we remember today. Lord, that you would look upon America, the United States, with mercy. That you would see past the confusion and the sin. Lord, and you would see the heart of your people who are crying out for a revival and a renewal in the United States, God. We lift up our governing officials, whether we agree with them or not. Lord, we pray that you would visit them and you would turn their hearts towards you and the truth of your word. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now let's continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. so I can see who you are. Thank you guys so much for your service for us. Thank you very much. And of course, on Memorial Day, we remember those who, who didn't make it home. Um, we honor their memory and uh, those who have gone on before us. So please enjoy these, these flowers. They're very, very beautiful. Um, is there any announcements? I know there's some. So whatever you guys usually do, if you take turns or you rock, paper, scissors to go first, Please do so. So, announcements. We'll start. Ladies first. Ladies first. And on behalf of the women's ministry, I want to thank the whole congregation for uh, supporting us. We made four hundred and sixty-five dollars wow. with donations. So, thank you, everybody, and we'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Next. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, my sister-in-law, uh, Pam. She found her cancer free, praise God. Wow. And she uh, would like me to thank everybody for your prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were right. Amen. We serve a human God. Amen. Uh, any more? I believe Pastor Mike. Oh, I have a couple. First of all, I'd like to make a note here that in our discussion, I saw a repeating of Acts 2, that the reason we skipped to the Russian part is because that was Luda. 
who is a you know, is Russian, and she's the one who lost her sister. And I know she's not here today. So I want to make that point that she is with us in heart. Uh, also, who also is with us, I've had several conversations with uh, Hal and Carolyn Martin, and it turns out that today's her birthday. Oh. So, for the purpose of, yeah, exactly. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carolyn. Happy birthday to you. May Jesus bless you. So I was, one more thing you yes, need to say? Yeah. Yes, I do. I have a very special announcement. Um, Dan, would you please, you can just stand where you are. I want to let you all know that Dan has accepted the, the uh, position of office secretary. Uh, Lydia's last official day in the office is Wednesday, so we want to welcome mm. Dan to another position in the church. <laughs> I was I was given the instruction to tug on my right ear because there's someone watching uh, a congregant here uh, that's watching so I'm tugging on my right ear throughout the service to let them know that we're thinking about them and we miss them um, so that's why I'm doing that um, so as we as we get ready to close here I'm going to invite my wife Naomi to come up with me and I just want to thank uh, of course, Dan Owen for his beautiful leadership today, and then uh, Mary Kay Owen as well. We appreciate it. Wasn't that beautiful? Like, that's a lot of organization to get everything together, to put people into place, and we just appreciate their ministry so much. So, um, I believe we, if you could stand up. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. May his lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.
worshiping today. If you're new, your first time, thank you for, for being here. We, we appreciate it. We, we are honored. Thank you very much. Um, now go in peace and let's serve the Lord together. Thanks be to God. Come on, it was a real treat, thank you.